Hello everyone and welcome to Photochemistry Lecture 6. In the earlier lecture, we have discussed about some basic concepts of photochemistry. In lecture 4, we have discussed about photoisomerization reaction. In lecture 5, we have discussed about dibimethane rearrangement reaction. And today, we are going to discuss about Norrish type 1 reaction. In the next lecture, we will discuss Norrish type 2 reaction in details. Now, what is Norrish type 1 and type 2 reaction? They are photochemical reactions with carbonyl compounds like aldehyde and ketones. The reaction was named after Ronald George Rayford Norrish. Do you want to see his picture? Yes, this is a great scientist, Ronald George Rayford Norrish, a British chemist born in 1897 and died in 1978. He got Nobel Prize in 1967 for studies of extremely fast chemical reactions affected by disturbing the equilibrium by means of very short pulse of energy. Let's have a look at Norrish type 1 and type 2 reactions. When light falls on carbonyl compounds, the molecule get excited in pi star electronic transition occurs. The electron easily goes to the triplet excited state and in this state alpha bond adjacent to the carbonyl group cleaves. This is known as Norrish type 1 reaction. But if the molecule has a gamma hydrogen with respect to the carbonyl group, look at the second reaction then it can an undergo another type of reaction. Light falls on the carbonyl functional group. It gets excited and abstracts a gamma proton through a six-member transition state. This reaction is called Norrish type 2 reaction. Today we will only focus on Norrish type 1 reaction. Now here are certain things which you should remember. 1. One. Aldehyde and ketone absorb light in the region 230 to 330 nanometer as a result of which n pi star transition occurs. In carbonyl compound there are two types of transitions pi pi star and n pi star transition but n pi star transition is a lower energy transition. Another thing which you should know is that n pi star transition has a very efficient intersystem crossing and as a result of which the excited electrons can easily go from a singlet excited state to a triplet excited state where the photochemical reaction actu actually takes place. Norrish type 1 reactions are generally carried out in the vapor phase than in the solution because the radicals react with the solvent to give different products. Next, look at these compounds. Can you guess anything about the rate of the reaction? Of course, Norrish type 1. I feel that the rate of the reaction will increase as you go from left to right. Ask why? In Norrish type 1, the bond alpha to the carbonyl cleaves.
cleavage of the bond gives primary radical secondary radical and tertiary radical now tell me the order of radical stability the order of radical stability is i think all of you know tertiary greater than secondary greater than primary so now i think you understood why the rate of the reaction will increase from left to right look at these reactions can you comment on the rate of the reaction norish type 1 reaction both these give a tertiary radical why the rate of the reaction is faster in the second case note that the energy of the first reaction the energy of what the energy of the triplet state in the first reaction is 73 kilo calories per mole the energy of the triplet state for the second reaction is 80 kilo calories per mole higher the energy of the triplet state more efficient will be the intersystem crossing and greater will be the rate of the alpha cleavage and faster will be the reaction and so the rate of the second reaction is much faster than that of the first reaction because the triplet state is of higher energy than in the first reaction though both the reaction gives tertiary radicals look at this compounds can you predict the rate of norish type 1 reaction yeah as we go from cyclohexanone to cyclopentanone to cyclobutanone the rate of the reaction increases as the strain in the ring increases the rate of the reaction also increases Now let's have a look at the fate of the radical intermediate formed during primary step of Norish type 1 reaction. You all know that radicals are very reactive and therefore it will undergo subsequent reaction to give neutral molecules in the secondary process. Let's take acetone as example. acetone in the presence of the light goes to excited triplet state and undergo alpha cleavage to give ethanoyl radical and methyl radical this is a norish type 1 fragmentation now what will happen to this free radicals this free radicals will undergo subsequent free radical reactions there are many possibilities one two ethanoyl radical can combine to give diacetyl two methyl radical can combine to give ethane molecule there are possibilities for decarbonylation and formation of ketene fourth the ethanoyl radical may abstract a hydrogen radical from the unreacted acetone to give a, to give acetaldehyde fifth two molecules of the corresponding radical formed can combine to give hexa 2,5 diene Now let's have a look at at an unsymmetrical ketone. This is an unsymmetrical ketone. 
In the presence of the light, it goes to the excited triplet state and undergoes Norrish type 1 fragmentation. Now, there are two types of alpha bonds. Cleavage of this bond will give methyl radical which is unstable. Cleavage of this bond will give rise to a tertiary butyl radical which is stable. So, this bond will not cleave. The ethanoyl radical and tertiary butyl radical will now undergo subsequent free radical reaction to give acetaldehyde, 2 methyl propene and 2 methyl propane. Note that here decarbonylation step may not occur because it will produce a unstable methyl radical. What about cyclic ketones? Let's take cyclohexanone as example. Cyclohexanone also undergoes Norrish type 1 fragmentation. Cleavage of alpha bond gives rise to a di radical intermediate. The di radical intermediate can undergo subsequent free radical reactions. It can either abstract a proton from the methylene carbon at 5 position to give hexa 5 in 1 al or it can undergo decarbonylation to give 1,5 di radical. This 1,5 di radical can join together to give cyclopentane. Now pra let's practice one more example together. Let's take 2,2-dimethyl cyclohexanone as an example. This compound, this compound can undergo alpha cleavage that is Norrish type 1 reaction. As gamma hydrogens are not available for Norrish type 2 reaction. There are two alpha bonds, red and blue, which will cleave. The bond which will give rise to a stable radical will cleave. That is, the red bond will cleave and not the blue bond. Cleavage of the bond will give rise to di radical. This di radical can undergo three types of reaction. The carbonyl radical can abstract a proton from the methyl group and give rise to compound 1 or it can abstract a methylene proton and give rise to compound 2. The dye radicals may lose carbon monoxide and give 1,5 di radical and this di radical will join together to give cyclopentane derivative 3. I think we have discussed enough on Norrish type 1 reaction. Now it's time for you to try yourself and practice more examples. Here are some assignments for you. Try Norrish type 1 reaction with the following compounds. You will be happy 
that I have given you some hints. Please leave your answers in the comment section. In summary, Norish type 1 reaction describes photochemical reactions taking place with carbonyl compounds like aldehyde and ketones. In this reaction, the bond alpha to the carbonyl group cleaves, leading to the formation of radical intermediate in the primary process. The radical intermediates in the secondary process undergoes subsequent radical reactions like abstraction of protons, decarbonylation, ketene formation and radical recombination to form neutral products. Aldehydes and ketones absorb light in the region of 230 nanometer to 330 nanometer as a result of which n pi star transition takes place. It is seen that n pi star transition has a very efficient intersystem crossing and so the excited electron can easily go from singlet excited state to triplet excited state where the photochemical reaction actually takes place. All reactions are carried out in the vapor phase without solvent. The rate of the reaction depends on certain factors like stability of the carbon radical form, energy of the triplet state, strain in the ring for cyclic ketones etc. That's all for today's lecture. Myself Dr. Kakali Lahiri signing off and will be back soon with the next lecture. If you like my lecture, please subscribe and comment. The links for the earlier lectures are provided in the description box. Thank you and bye-bye.